Hey guys, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, so, yeah, so first things first, why are you in a ska band? Uh, <laughs> but but no, but no, but no, really, but no, really, I'm curious. So how did you all come together? Now, I, I read that you were all in, in marching band together. So walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, so we're all marching band geeks, except for Leela. She, she was never in marching band. <laughs> um, but it was basically our saxophonist Thomas and our drummer Alex. They had this idea that they wanted to start basically a club, although not technically a club. It was more low key, I guess. So wait, so wait, so so it wasn't even a band at first. It was just no, a club. No, no, no. It was just a club. It was, like it was just it was just a ska appreciation group. Yeah, it literally it was called Ska Ensemble, and it was just anybody who wanted to come jam after marching band practice. We'd oh. go to the music room and we'd hang out and we'd play ska music because that's oh. what Thomas and Alex like to do. And. And now you're, you guys are, you know, you're a, tw you're a 12 piece ska band. Now we're, and you, you said one of your other members was not, you know, was not in the marching band was, so was it the 11 of you or was it just like a few of you and like others trickled in as time went on or? And Jay, how many people do you think were in ska ensemble like total? I think at like, its peak, there was about 40 or so. There was 40 or so in the Facebook group. Yeah. I remember at oh, some point, but, wow. because, but not all of them, not all of them went to a single, you know, rehearsal at the same time, you know, yeah. eventually we got down to, to 11 people and then, well, and then uh, Thomas came back. That's another story on its own entirely, but uh, Thomas and Alex are, are uh, definitely the founding fathers of the band. And mm -hmm. um, it's, it's because of them. It's because of their, uh, of their openness to the genre and their openness to, to everybody who just wanted to be a part of that, that kind of helped uh, pave the way for the band to be uh, what it is today. Wow, so. And, yeah, I mean, I didn't even start singing. I came in with my ukulele, my electric oh, wow. ukulele, cause they needed another guitarist. And I'm like, well, I have a ukulele. And they're like, that's cute, Kayla. And I'm like, no, it's electric. And then I was in. So, and then the singer dropped out <laughs> And then we desperately need a singer because we had a little show next week. I'm like, I'll try. Like it literally. It, it's all it all it's it's almost out of a movie actually. <laughs> it's yeah, almost, it's like way. almost out of like that thing you do, you know, the Tom Hanks movie where like they replace the drummer and suddenly they make it big. <laughs> I I would hardly say we've made it big, but you know. Well, I mean, hey, well, anyway. <laughs> but in NJ started out on sax, and we decided during the pandemic we wanted to do. An Elton John song and NJ didn't have a sax with him but he had a piano mm -hmm. and it turns out he's just you, know, you can't do you just were a master sorry, at sorry. piano and we didn't even know right so now okay I'm, I'm not a master at piano by any master. stretch of the imagination but no just no, listen stop, to stop, her please. dude <laughs> I mean we we did Elton John and you know, you can't do El Elton John without some sort of keyboard or piano in there, right? I was, it was kind of a shoe in at that point. I think I was like the, the person with the most experience um, with the keyboard. And uh, it was meant to, be, to just be a one-off thing. Like the, that one little cover that we did. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, we actually did that cover for uh, Relay for Life in, the, in a San Diego. I, wow. My best friend there, she she reached out to us and uh, she said that they needed performers for uh, for the virtual event that they were having this summer. So uh, we got together, we uh, we put together uh, the cover of Crocodile Rock, and um, yeah, it, again, it was supposed to just be a one-off thing, but then everybody heard like the final cut of it, and uh, like all the all the mixers, like the the people who usually do our mixing in our band, we we added all of our own music. Oh. And they they heard it and they were like, "Hang on, there's something else here." And then they and then we started doing a little bit more experimenting with like other projects and like seeing how we're doing how we're doing with like uh, a keyboard in there as well and also playing with like different MIDI sounds and all that stuff and the way that it blended with the band, it's like it was meant to be there the whole time. Wow! And I'm I'm really excited to to play a some keyboard stuff in a 
all the future projects that we have yeah, down dude. the road. Yeah, dude. No, I mean, I mean, I'm excited just listening to it. You know, I was I was listening to some of your guys' stuff, and I looked at those uh, covers you did uh, during you know the COVID lockdown, and I really, really enjoyed your covers of yeah, Crocodile Rock, and also I write sins, not tragedies. Now, you know, in terms of just strictly music, what would you say, even you know, Scott notwithstanding, what would you say are some of your biggest influences? NJ, you want to go first? I personally don't have, when it comes to Scott, it, there's, and the, the playing that we, uh, that I do with the band itself, there's not a whole lot of influence that I kind of bring to the table there. If anything, I, I, I do have, everybody in the band actually has a, a classical music background, or sorry, classical training, rather, that's the, that's the, uh, the terms that we, that we use. But um, I was trained in a in classical piano beforehand, and same with a uh, classical saxophone since I was like, oh man, since I was five or so with a piano. So a lot of like a, a lot of classical music, a lot of like classical, um, you know, formal technique, and I think when I play the the covers that we do on keyboard. I feel like that style definitely doesn't translate well to ska. <laughs> so I'm, oh. it's almost like I'm, almost like I'm relearning how to play piano for this genre that we have here. But for me personally, um, definitely my uh, biggest influences, they they come from my parents because they they like a lot of like a uh, classic rock stuff. Like my dad loves my my parents both love the Beatles, you know, Pink Floyd, uh, Led Zeppelin, all those all those classic rock artists. Yeah. Um, definitely shapes my uh my music taste today and i i mostly listen to a uh, like a lot of alternative a little bit of punk here and there and definitely a lot of ska for sure and how, and how about you kayla for me it's i definitely grew up with a lot of like emo and pop punk music and i would say i'm the emo kid of the band because every it's so funny everyone has such different influences like interesting we have people who are like oh yeah i just listen to jazz or i just listen to soul or i listen to hard punk i'm like pop punk you know (laughs) um and then a few of the members like have exclusively listened to ska so it's it's really fun when we're writing that we have so many different influences um but yeah personally a lot of pop punk and a lot of pop music. I am not afraid to say I love pop music and yeah, I be. love my catchy melodies. Um, but yeah, Paramore, Water Parks, The Main, uh, growing up, Kelly Clarkson, Taylor Swift. Uh, I'd say my favorite artist ever is John Bellion. Uh, if you're not familiar, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually not familiar. <laughs> the guy is absolutely brilliant. He, Oh, don't get me started off on fangirling on John Bellion, but well, I'll 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 keep a mental note of him definitely to go, yeah, definitely it's up on him. He's someone he does. You've heard his music because he's done every pop like the Monster Eminem and Rihanna. That was him. Oh. Um, he's done Jason Derulo stuff. He's done New Halsey and Miley Cyrus. Like he he produces for a lot of people, but his own music is like alternative pop music, very rhythmic. Uh, he's very tactical in how he chooses his lyrics so they're accessible but still to the point and pinpointed on what he's trying to say and you got to check his stuff out but yes John Bellion huge influence for me all right John Bellion will do Um, if I may Um, interject something yes sir um I must say that Kayla's a lot of Kayla's influences when she's writing the lyrics for our original music doesn't actually come from uh, from musical artists at all. If, Kayla, if you'd like to elaborate. Well, I, I um, well, I tell you that's a that's a really good point because I actually did want to bring this up because I, I noticed that besides from you know obviously the influence of other musicians, you know, you guys seem to pull from everything ranging from literature like T. S. Eliot to memes to even like crossword puzzles. So, how big of a role do all of these things play in your songwriting and your composing and and everything? <laughs> I mean, it's the way we write is actually so efficient (laughs) because usually it's um, 
it'll be me or our saxophonist David mm -hmm. will have like some lyrical ideas or I generally lyrics and melody kind of come at the same time for me um, but we start with that and then we'll have some like basic chords and then we take it into a room which has been harder during the pandemic because mm -hmm. we haven't seen each other since before the pandemic but we'll go into a room and we'll be like okay here's this idea I have and then there'll be a few other members who are like let's change these chords up to make it not a minor f c g and then it becomes a little more interesting and then vincent comes in and adds his horn parts and then like that's how we write so and, and with and with some and i was curious also with so many of you does it make collaboration difficult at all or is it is it is it is it pretty feasible with you with all of you it's I think there's like about six or seven of us that are like the kind of we focus in on the songwriting. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different talent they bring to the table, which is super cool. But yeah, there's like a group of us that do the songwriting and that's pretty much how it goes. Like it's it works really well. Like it's I never imagined being in a group where it worked that well and we just come in, we're like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. like and it's not just we all agree there's pushback but we work very well together it's really fun but that first idea for me just comes from literally anything like I and I find a lot of times like when I'm kind of just driving in the car if I turn the radio off I have to fill the noise with something so I start singing and making stuff up even just walking around the neighborhood and yeah, I feel like it's cliche to say there's a story and everything, but there is. Yeah. And we have some we have some fun ones. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and I mean so so I, what would you say what would you say is probably your your best example of like for of say using like a meme in a song? Well, that the meme specifically was for Why You in a Ska Band. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. cuz that that song literally came from uh, a lot of that is true that I had a friend who came to one of our shows and was like, yeah, you guys are, you guys are really great, way better than I expected. Um, but you can't dance at all. Like that sucked. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. Um, but then like, we'd get these weird comments like that. And I remember it was me, Gabe and Alex, and we went into um, I, I was at, I worked at our college radio station and we went into our little lounge there and we're like, we, we need to write a song. We need to stop doing covers. We want to be a real band, you know? Um, and I'm like, let's make a song about ska and all these weird comments we get. So that's how that became what it is. And have you seen the mozzarella sticks meme? Uh, I don't think I have actually. <laughs> okay, so it's this meme that's very popular in the ska community that says... Do you mind if I share my screen? I have it right here. Do you have it right there? Okay, go ahead and share that. I have it right here, yeah. Uh, I'll so, post the table for just sharing. Um, let me... Well, while, well, while, he's, is, well, while he's pulling, can... while he's working on that, I did also want to ask you, Um, so... I, I loved your song Palace Gates, which which is described as, as as being, you know, about something that I think everyone can relate to. It's about Swedish punk rockers who want to be farmers. Yeah, that, and that's part that's part of it. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's part of it. What is it really about? <laughs> it, it, this is not this is not gonna be any more relatable, I don't think. Um it was when I was in studying political science in Sweden and I turned 21 while I was there and I had never had a drop of alcohol before then I broke edge and I had half a beer and I was like that sucked <laughs> I'm like this tastes bad I, I like finished it I'm like I feel nothing I do not get the hype of alcohol so like I said, that's probably not relatable to a lot of people. Well, I mean, I mean, honestly, that's actually how I reacted to yeah. my, my, my first sip, so. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's literally, that inspired that song. I was like, oh, okay. That was I mean, that. I mean, honestly, I mean, honestly, though, what I, what I gathered from it was like, it's, it is about this greater sense of kind of rebelling and like not fitting in with the norms, which, you know, is prevalent in 
ska punk rock in general and and i and i but i thought that it was amazing that you like you could take this you could take some, this like this kind of almost abstract idea like swedish punk rockers who want to be farmers well that was a real guy i met in the bar i mean <laughs> while this experience was happening i mean and i mean <laughs> it i you know a, he was the nicest guy um, but it was so funny that it what it ended up the deeper thing is that you know we're sitting here and we're talking and he's telling me how like this is my dream and I'm like that's so awesome like my dream is to go at you know changing and whatnot but I was like oh I want to go do PR in LA and the dream is you know music and stuff and he was like that's crazy and like what you said is crazy but it was like you know people sometimes it's hard to imagine people wanting such different things but really we're all just searching for what's going to make us happy and what's going to be fulfilling and for him it was a farm it, it he was you know it was a tatted guy you know his dropkick murphy shirt like oh perfect it, it's so funny because i'm just like what but yeah and but before then he wanted to be he wanted to join the military and be at the work at the palace so that's where that's where that song came from so all this stuff kind of happened and I'm like this just needs to be a song I mean that's amazing I mean again it's such an interesting idea and I was curious for you Nick um how do you how do you take all these song ideas you know that kind of come in in like this <laughs> how do I take that is how do you mean by that? Well, I like, just uh, well, well, I just mean I just mean especially, you know, because you guys all come from these different backgrounds and you know, you guys all have these different kind of levels of experience, you know, and also these different experiences, you know, and you and and I think, you know, when Kayla come comes in with something like that, which is such a it's such a again, it's kind of brilliant abstract idea, you know, how you know, how do you how do you I I guess I I guess you could say you know, how do you, how do you go, how do you go, how do you approach it? I guess you could say, like, how do you approach, like, okay, how do we turn, how do we take this and make, and make a, make a whole song around it, all these instruments and everything? Man, um, I have zero writing experience and I definitely don't write for the band. I think maybe the most that I did was like some, uh, some like, uh, different chords for, for like one song that we did one time. But and it was like on a in a syncopated rhythm or something. But that that was very limited, you know, writing that I did for it. It was very bare bones. It worked with the song, but again, it was very bare bones and it just kind of served its purpose. But when it comes down to it, we actually, uh, again, talking about different uh, influences that the that the bands have. Um, if you go back to our uh, to our Why You in a Ska Band song, uh, the main motif that the horns play actually comes from the rite of spring if you if you know that piece like like listen to it and then and then the the motif there you'll you'll hear everywhere in the song that we wrote for it so yeah so when it comes to writing i have zero talent there i just i just do what the writers tell me to do honestly oh well man you also have far more background in music than i do so there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right all right guys um uh i am out of questions here um and and yes it is true the producer zach is telling me to wrap it up but guys i really want to say this was so great talking to both of you and to talk about your band once again they are voluntary hazing check out their website check out their stuff they are amazing thank you all good night thank you so much Wait, let me let me share the let me share the meme. One second. Oh, yes, one second. the meme. The meme. Uh, okay. All right. All right. This is it right here. This is it. And when I say we've gotten tagged in this meme fifty-six times, that's not really an exaggeration. All right. This is the definitive ska meme. It came out like a year and a half ago or whatever. And of and... course the subreddit that this is on is R slash white people Twitter. So, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> So that's yep. the meme in question. That is the meme. Perfect. That's that's brilliant. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. <laughs>